Mayor Sheng Tao, I really appreciate your time, especially joining somebody like me, a YouTuber, for this interview. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. It's an honor to be on your show right now, Brody. So it's kind of a big sports story today involving the Oakland A's, and we'll get to the culmination of the important part in just a second. But I want to start with the Coliseum Complex has recently gone through two separate sales. It's entirely sold, meaning that the A's are out, the city of Oakland is out, the county of Alameda is out. AASEG, the African American Sports and Entertainment Group, they are in the Coliseum, 100% owners and operators. But in the short term, Oakland gets so, uh, paid for their sale and their share of the site. I'm just curious, how fast does the payment of that transaction happen? How fast does Oakland get the cash influx? And mm -hmm. what would have happened if Oakland didn't get that money? Yes, absolutely. And so a lot of people, let's start from the very beginning, right? So a lot of people think that somehow this uh, deal came together last minute so that we can save services in the city. As we all know, big cities like the city of Oakland across the nation, specifically here in California, we're still going through a huge budget deficit. And so we really got to figure out how we cut back. Uh, but that's actually not not true. You know, the work with ASCG and selling our half actually started about three years ago. And so it did move um, in an expeditious way, uh, but in a responsible way. And so with that being said, the money that we will be seeing uh, is that we are actually we've actually received five million dollars already as a deposit. And so we still have a few more days for the uh, tw the 20 day cure, but we already have seen the first 15 million tranche of money. So there is a public schedule uh, that we made public around like when is the money coming in? There's a tranche that's supposed to be in, in September. That's 15 million. We have that. And then we move to, um, you know, December when we're going to get another tranche and in January for a total of the full amount. And so with that being said, if we didn't have that money, we would see about four fire station closing, uh, you know, in a, on a rotating basis. And then we would see, um, you know, police academies not being able to take place. You would see, you know, uh, actual city workers being laid off. And so understanding this, we you know, ASCG has just been a great partner. They really want the city to succeed. And so they had to take some risks. And some yeah. of those risks mean moving forward in a more expeditious way. And we're so honored to be able to work with them. I was going to say, that's a pretty quick payment schedule. And for Oakland, who needs that money to get that money, it works out really well as part of the deal. Why, mm -hmm. is, it, why is it better for AASCG to own and operate and control the Coliseum site? versus the city and county tandem, which had been in control of it for so many decades, basically since the start of the Coliseum Complex in the 60s, what, what is AASCG able to do that maybe the city and county are just not in the place anymore to do? You know, I like to think of the city and the county's relationship as like a co-parenting relationship. And sometimes it just doesn't work out. Actually, a lot of times it doesn't. And so what we're seeing is that the ownership of the Coliseum by these two organizations, which is the city and the county, um, it hasn't actually, you know, built out the Coliseum. You know, uh, it's in the space of, uh, you know, um, a cycle of just being kind of stagnant. And so for me, it's all about how do we move the city forward? Mm -hmm. And that means that since the A's were already purchasing the county side of it, you know, and that was a whole, you know, uh, County didn't really come and talk to the city about selling their half. So it was, you know, a constant bad relationship. And so with that being said, coming in, I understood that having one owner for the Coliseum is going to be key in how we, one, create this catalyst for the influx of new revenues to come into the city of Oakland through development of the site. And then two, you know, just that's just basically what it is. It's just the development and moving that site forward. Um, and so having one owner is going to be key in how we are successful, not just for the Coliseum, but for the city. And having one owner who doesn't maybe have the same track record with the Oakland A's as the city of Oakland does. And look, it's it's drama, it's history, it's it's in the past, it all happened, but maybe it opens up some new doors that AASCG could get things done. And that leads to kind of the big topic and question that everybody's talking about right now. The report this morning from KFBK Radio out of Sacramento is saying that the Major League Baseball Players Association hasn't even fully signed off on the A's playing next season up in Sacramento. I don't know how much to read into this yet. We're still kind of evolving and figuring this out. But if there ever was any uncertainty about playing regular season games up there or full season up there, postseason games up there, and I know you are not AASCG, you do not represent them or their business or their interests. 
but is it part of their plan and possibility to keep space open? And by that, I mean space open at the Coliseum site for the future, space open in the Coliseum current stadium schedule that this could happen. How do you see them operating and maybe being willing to participate in this? Yeah, well, first and foremost, um, with the Oakland A's, you know, saying that they're going to take off to Sacramento, we've already secured the Oakland Roots, our soccer team, right. to actually play at the Coliseum for 2025 as their stadium is being built out right adjacent to it at the uh, at the Malibu site. And, you know, ASCG has a strong reputation of working with the Oakland A's, right? They, they had to work with the Oakland A's to buy their half of the Coliseum. And that is go that went through. And so what that shows me is that ASCG can work with the A's to actually uh, come up with a plan if the A's choose to stay at the Coliseum. You know, it is my understanding, of course, like you stated, I don't speak for ASCG, uh, but it is my understanding that that is what they want. They would like to continue Team with the having the Coliseum there, obviously with upgrades, um, but to also have the opportunity if that there is sports that is available, professional sports, that they will have space for professional sports there. In regards to Sacramento and what Scott Boris has stated, um, you know, we know that Scott represents not only Oakland A's play, but the plethora of all the great players in uh, the league. And so, you know, with him, who is actually a Central Valley guy, it's my understanding he uh, lives in, or lived or lives in Elk Grove, Correct. is that... I mean, I was born and raised in Stockton. I know how the heat gets. Sometimes you get to 120 degrees. And with that, you know, artificial turf, it's my understanding that it can be upwards of 20 to 30 degrees hotter on that actual turf. And so it's not a surprise to me. We always knew that when the A's announced they were going to Sacramento, that there was a reason why there wasn't a professional team in Sacramento to begin with. It's so hot out there, right? And I believe that now Casey uh, Casey Pratt, who uh, is working for me now, but reported before he started working for me, reported earlier that, you know, having artificial turf is just not something that we you know, that we should take lightly, especially when you don't have, you know, it, especially when it's not indoors. And of course, there's another obstacle of it being a minor league team field. So it's all of these different things that doesn't make it fun for players to play. It's actually kind of dangerous for their bodies, right? And so I, I totally get where Scott's coming from. And again, we welcome that conversation here in the city of Oakland, being that ASCG is the only one owner now. I think that if uh, John Fisher and his team would like to come back and have that conversation with ASCG, that is more than welcome. And I, I don't mean to say this in, a, in an insulting way because you're mayor now, but there were prior mm -hmm. mayors that were obviously working on these plans and this project. It, it makes it more simple that DAs don't have to work with the city, right? In anything well, Coliseum related. Absolutely. I mean, it, I mean, let's just be clear. Even, you know, it wasn't just like the city. It was a city and the county. Right. And yes, Correct. we're both like government. Uh, we're both governmental arms. But that doesn't mean, you know, it's just kind of like a, a sibling relationship. Right. It doesn't mean that we get along and agree on everything. We all have different staff. We have right. different attorneys. And uh, when attorneys get into stuff like this, it just gets uh, convoluted and long. Uh, but to have one ownership of this, uh, the Coliseum, I think that that's going to be huge. And again, they have a track record now of being right. able to uh, successfully work with the A's to begin with. And, you know, it, no, there's I want to be clear, like there's. You know, it's a win-win all around. You know, it's not like if the A's come back, somehow they lost something. No, it's just a win-win-win all around. Fans win. The city wins. You know, the A's win. Uh, and they get to still be in this beautiful weather and still have, like, a huge chunk of profit coming in. And it just wins for everybody. And so I, I don't want people to think that, you know, the A's coming back, that somebody will be the bad guy or will look bad. No, it's not that. It's, you know, let's just do what's right and What's right, I believe, is keeping the A's here in the city of Oakland, um, if that is the will of ASCG and the Oakland A's. And again, all of this hypothetical, uh, it's based off reports, but there are some things to be interested in here in the way that this news has come out and the people that are bringing this news, like Scott Boris, to the forefront. Uh, it seems to me, and I'll get into my Howard Terminal question in just a second. I can't believe you and I are going to talk Howard Terminal all over again. It's been a few years. Um, but it seems to me like at this point, the Coliseum site is the realistic 
future home, the only potential home of another major pro sports team coming to Oakland. And again, we've already established the roots and soul. That's where they'll play next year. The ballers are over at Ramondi. By the way, congratulations on them to making the playoffs. So some things are settled. But if you were to land ever any kind of MLB team again, does it seem like the Coliseum to you is kind of the only option right now, the only realistic option right now? Well, you know, realistic in a sense that we can start the work like immediately, right. you know, um, Howard, Terminal, Howard Terminal can still be an option. There is an open RFP out for Howard, Howard Terminal, right. you know, and so, but remember all the hoops that we have to jump through, right? And so, uh, it, I mean, it's right there on the BART tracks, you know, it's right where transportation is. I understand that some folks are like, we need to be next to a body of water. I would argue that the Coliseum is really close to a body of water, <laughs> you know, um, but with that being said, it, it makes sense in a way where everything is already cleared. CEQA cleared. It's already um, scaled to be, you know, where we can host uh, the uh, sports. It just needs to be developed out, meaning like we need restaurants, we need bars, we need things for people to do around there. And this is why it's so exciting to have ASEG in that space so that we can finally move forward and develop not only the Coliseum, but with the help of the city, you know, the Hagenberg corridor where right. the airport meets the Coliseum, that's my priority corridor. And so you're going to start seeing that that whole corridor is going to be uh, developed and it's going to change in a more positive way for Oaklanders and fans. All right. Last A's and Coliseum related question here. Um, and, and your time as mayor is the, is the, obviously the tail end of what we think right now is the team's existence at the Coliseum. Just looking back on anything that you ever had your hands on or had control over, are there things as we approach the final six games ever and the final homestand right around the corner, do you look back and see things you would have done differently? And I'll also put this in the question too. Are there things you look back and say, I liked what I did there so much that I would double down. If I had to do it over again, I would have done it the exact same way or more next time around. You know, I, I look back and I, you know, as a council member, you know, I was very supportive of doing whatever we can to keep the A's in Oakland. So there's no regrets there coming into the city uh, um, as mayor of Oakland, you know, having that first conversation with John Fisher, where I did believe that, you know, he wanted to stay. He said that he wanted to work hard to getting the A's to stay here, you know, um, you know, looking back on that specific conversation, I I think that I I know that I wouldn't have done anything different. I'm a person who gives people the opportunity to be honest until I am proven wrong. And uh, unfortunately, you know, come to find out that they were, you know, they were basically on the track to Las Vegas already. Uh, but all of that time spent from my city staff, you know, time is money and not just that, but we're a small team. So we could have like been really focused somewhere else, but I wouldn't take any of that back because I know that I can sleep at night knowing that I fought for what I felt was right for the city of Oakland, even with the um, letting go of the, uh, the Oakland A's and not extending their lease after they said they're going to move to Las Vegas. You know, I, I think that that's exactly what we should do. We need to move forward. It's like breaking up with somebody. You got to move yeah. forward. And, um, and we've been able to move forward and sell the Coliseum to the one owner. And I'm just excited for what's to come in that space. Again, we have the Oakland roots and the Oakland soul. And the front from all of this was the creation of the Oakland Ballers, Yeah, right? I mean, this is the birth child of like the yeah. A's leaving, of my leadership coming in, working with community. I mean, we're working with community on this idea where I said, okay, well, this is a great idea of the Oakland Ballers, but you need to do X, Y, Z. And they did. They went out there, found their investors, and we got it done together in partnership, really showing the whole world like, Oakland can get things done if they have a good partner. And so with that, all of that to say is I wouldn't take anything back. And that's the that's the truth of it all, because I do believe that it allowed for the city of Oakland through all these decisions and the opportunities that it allowed for the city of Oakland to really move forward in a more positive way where we get the Oakland ballers who, like you stated, is in the playoffs. Yeah. We're really excited about that. And then, um, you know, making sure that the Coliseum and that whole corridor moves forward. 
So whether we have uh, baseball stadiums or sports venues being constructed or not, it's an interesting upcoming years or decades, I should say, in Oakland when the Coliseum might be redeveloped and the Howard Terminal site might be redeveloped. And I'll get to that now. The Port of Oakland issued that request for qualifications at the Howard site, whatever they call it. It's really Howard yeah. Terminal. That's how we know it. Uh, they're looking <laughs> for ideas and they're looking for potential buyers and, and investors in that land. They, they're still interested in doing something there. Um, yeah. So let me let me do this. Let me let me get both sides of it. For you, it's 50 plus acres right north of Jack London Square. It's a great spot in Oakland. It's so underutilized right now. What's a likely scenario and what's a dream scenario from a mayor's perspective of what ultimately happens there? You know, um, for me, like it's all the same. It's like I need what needs to happen there is something that can generate one revenue for the city right. as we heard the deficit, right. right? Like long-term permanent revenues for the city. And then number two is an opportunity to activate the space, meaning like bodies, bringing bodies, bringing people to that center. You know, uh, we have a lot of things that are being built out on that uh, at Howard Terminal. And so for me, that would be like an amazing feat is to be able to not only generate new revenues. I'm really big on generating new revenue so that we can stop going after property owners and taxpayers. And then number two, just, you know, having that foot traffic is going to be key to our safety and, you know, our thriving small businesses here. All right. Uh, can you give me like 45 seconds to, to spell out here a, a dream scenario, all right? And then you tell me if I'm crazy for, for thinking about this. Okay. So you've got this RFQ, you've got the Port of Oakland who's highly motivated to say, hey, somebody come develop this. What if somebody out there from the Bay Area with a lot of money says, wait, I just saw all those renderings that the A's did. They did all the legwork. They proved that you can get an EIR done at Howard Terminal. You can get BCDC approval at Howard Terminal. What if somebody else came along and said, I'm going to develop the entire area around it, but I'm going to carve out, oh, I don't know, 15 acres or so for some type of professional sports venue in the future. I'm also going to go ahead and tell Major League Baseball or major league soccer or whatever the league is and say, you know what? I own this land. We have worked on this with the port. I've got the money to start the team. So I'm just saying if the A's ship has sailed, is it possible somebody comes in, takes advantage of the Howard terminal site? Oh, oh, by the way, I still think there's like $600 million of infrastructure that the city has gone out and acquired uh, from the state and federal sources. So there's all that going at the site that somebody might actually use it for a sports development. Is that is that my dream or is that somewhere on the spectrum of reality? No, I mean, that could be reality. I mean, what you're talking about is exactly what we were hoping that the A's would do. Right. So if somebody can actually have, if somebody comes in and actually has the real money to do that, it's like, let's have a real conversation. There could be real partnership here in synergy, you know? Um, and so again, that will bring bodies in that will cre create jobs. And so it's not off the table at all. It's not just a far-fetched dream of yours. You know, it's actually something that could be doable, but we, you know, time is ticking and we, we do need for that person in your dream to step up yeah. <laughs> and say, this is something that we, we want done because that would be really exciting for everyone. All right. So you've got the roots and soul at the Coliseum next year, the ballers again at the playoffs in Ramondi and, and how they've gotten started and established so quickly. I mean, I, I remember getting the phone call last November. I'm like, wait, this is for next year? And then going from Laney to their new stadium within like a month and a half. It's amazing how it all came together. I think I think Oaklanders, I think people from the East Bay should be happy and proud of what has sprouted up literally uh, with these pro sports teams. But my question is this. Do you think your constituents, people in the East Bay, people who live in Oakland, should they be, I mean, they're happy with that. Should they still aim for more? Should they still have the hope that someday a, one of the major pro sports leagues will come back to Oakland? How, how, sh how do you think they should feel about that? Yeah, you know, I think that, so for Oaklanders, um, I think that it's like a love-hate relationship with professional sports. The reason why I say that is that in the past, you know, um, leaders in the past have given such sweetheart deals that was really on the backs of taxpayers and residents. And uh, just knowing that in moving forward, like we can't continue to do that. And so with that being said, if there is, you know, a professional sports team that will come in to do, uh, to have a fair partnership, to have a fair partnership, that we would welcome that, you know, residents will love that. We would welcome that. 
And, uh, you know, I'd be really excited for that. Uh, but with that being said, we're really excited for the teams that we do have right. that are truly rooted in the city of Oakland and have our values. And I think that that's what that's the key part. It's like if you come in and you are a fair partner and you have values of community and you have values of caring for this the city, because that's what we that's our culture It's who we are as Oaklanders then you can get things done and you can get things done really quickly like we did with ASCG and the sell of the Coliseum site. That's an example. And then with the ballers, that's a huge example. The ballers, you know, I feel like the baller stadium and the team is like my own child because we birthed <laughs> it from when I was in office. And, and remember, I haven't been in office for even two years right. yet. And so we've completed Ramondi Park so quickly in the cell of the Coliseum. So anybody who says that the city can't get anything done is like, yeah, we can't get anything done with a bad partner. We refuse to be taken advantage of and like we have been taken advantage of like decades past. Right. So I want to be clear about that. There are no more sweetheart deals. We just want you to be a fair partner. We will do our part if you do your part. As I now formally end this interview, I just want to point it out. You and I did not color coordinate on your jacket or my shirt, but That's I'm sure nice. on camera it's going to come across looking quite nice. Uh, Mayor Sheng Tao, I really appreciate the time. I wish you the best of luck in however the next few weeks and months go, and I appreciate our conversation. We'll do it again hopefully sometime soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Brody.